Righty ho. So this is just yesterday that we're up to now. So um, same thing, hit the gym, um, jump in the ice bath. And again, like it's getting easier. Beck did um, three minutes straight. Really, really cool. So that was really cool. I was I was super, super impressed. Um, same, did my affirmations and, and spent a bit of time in, um, in, in prayer. And, um, and one of the things that kind of came up when I was, when I was just kind of refre- reflecting during that time and thinking was like, you know, my first, my first thought, whenever I think about, whenever I think about, um, why I do what I do and whenever I think about, you know, um, who I'm doing it for and, and whatever, and the impact I want to make, it's always my kids and totally understandable Totally understandable, but at the same time, like very rarely is is Beck my first thought, and that kind of started to bother me a little bit, you know. And I was going, the 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 question, you know, it's always it's always my kids first, and then I think of Beck, and I thought that was really interesting, because the 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 question I had to ask myself then, and, I, and the truth is, I don't have a good answer. If I want to be really honest with myself, it's not going to be an answer that I want. And it's going to be something that I'm going to be working on. But the the question is, do I see Beck as 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 important as the kids, or do I see Beck as a means to an end to the most important thing, which is my kids? And if I'm to be really truthfully honest, my my priorities that default, like the first things that come to mind is that I would have to say, well, actually, un- unfortunately, if I'm going to be really truthfully honest with myself, is that I probably do subconsciously see Beck as a means to an end to the most important people in my life, which is all my kids. And and I don't like that. That's the thing is I don't like that. I think, wow, interesting. So what I was just thinking then was if there's one thing I know, it's, the, it's how I model my love to Beck is what my kids will model. So even in that, I'm like, well, I want to love Beck. Why? So my kids know how to be loved. Like, why don't I just, why isn't my attention just give Beck what she needs so that she can thrive? I want to see my kids thrive. And of course I want to see Beck thrive. But that's not really my focus, which is really, if I'm going to be really honest, it's very odd to get to the point that I have to be that transparent about it and, and, and ask the hard question and say, well, really, am I, am I, mm, how do I, how do I say this right? Like, do I love Beck to the same degree I love my kids? And I want to say yes. Like, it, it, my, my first thing is, like, yeah, I do. But then I think around it, and the first thing, like, why do you do what you do? Kids. Like, someone asked me about that just the other day. Like, we were, like we were kind of, I can't remember what it was, and they asked me, like, you know, why are you, why are you doing what you're doing, Billy? Oh, for my kids. Like, that's crazy. And, uh, you, know, and what, you know what feels really, really good? And I remember like when, when, you know, one of the early episodes when we were down in Esperance is that whole thing about making love all day, right? And not in a, obviously not in a sexual sense, right? Maybe for some people they're about it, right? But when I say making love all day, like you, you're, you're creating love between each other and you do that by communicating love all day and it's going, well, what do you need from me right now? How can I help you? How can I serve you? You got a shitload of stuff to do around the house, yeah? Cool, I'll, I'll help you with that. You want a bit of like, you, I'll, I'll run you a bath, set you up, like boom, like I'll, I want to, I want to show my love to you all day, and that could be a a kiss, it could make lunch for you, it could, you know, um, sit and listen to you and not interject as well, which is fucking something that I need to work on for sure, you know, and and looking at all these things, and and then no wonder. No wonder the days that I do that, we end up having like wicked good sex. And how can you not? It's literally been love all day throughout the whole day. And the cool part is, I'm, I'm not, and again, like the truth is, I'm not doing it because I, uh, there's any sexual gratification at the end. 
It's I'm doing it because I I I want to show back that I love her. Right. The interesting part around all this is that I go, why do I want to show back that I love her? I want to have a great relationship, but do I want her to have a great relationship with me? Do I want her to feel love? And just like I would for my kids, you know, would I, would I, the word, sorry, the thought that I just had then was around with, say, um, there's certainly a level of ownership, not to my daughters or wife, right? But ownership of the outcome of how I raise my my kids. And obviously, I don't want to live with a life of regret. And the interesting part about children is that you start something in motion that will outlive you. It Like my kids are going, well, provided there's no tragedy, will outlive me, right? And... I think it's an interesting thing to consider. Maybe there's not as much of a sense of... Oh, ownership such an odd word. It's the only word I can think of. So I'm not talking about possessiveness, okay? I have I have a stake in the outcome of this person's life. I also have a absolutely fucking huge stake in the outcome of Beck's life and quality of life. Like I literally married the woman. We Everything we own is together. So, you know, um, but but I, I seem to default to not that approach straight away. And maybe I'm being too critical. Maybe people argue that, but I also, I don't like it, you know? So, and, and this is the interesting thing is, is my mind defaults to it, but I love giving back what she needs to thrive. And I'm not saying that I silver platter and I try and make life easy and, um, well, I think there's a little bit of that, but like, obviously there's an element of growth involved and, and that's not easy. And there's discipline, which she is quite disciplined and stuff anyway. Um, and growing and, and I'm not talking about just silver plattering or plattering a life that she has to do nothing like all, it's not about that. It's about how do I communicate to you that you are loved and valuable and champion you and, and champion your growth, and and as I think as a as a, as a husband, as like a leader down the path of that that the we are headed, you know, and and provide in the areas that I need to provide, you know, and and serve her. What does that look like? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, so I'm going to keep myself in check with that. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. I'm just reading my notes on, on that point. I said, do I see Beck as a means to an end or the end in itself? I often default to my children first, then think, and then Beck. And often when I think around my dedication, yes, I am dedicated to Beck, but I am also often dedicated through Beck to my children. It feels like oftentimes Beck is the conduit of my dedicated of my dedication to my children, biologically, emotionally, and psychologically. The thing that I want to start seeing is Beck is the end also. I don't get anything from Beck. I want to love Beck because I love Beck and just love my and just like my kids are part of my legacy, my wife is my wife is part of my legacy. So I build her up. Not because of what my kids see, but because of what she sees. She gets what she needs from me because she needs it and I want her to be whole and fulfilled in our in her relationship with me, just like I do with my kids. And I and it, so that's that's actually a really beautiful paragraph, and that flowed really really well. I thought that was going to be very choppy, but that actually worked. That was really, I should have just read that instead of rambled for the last ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Um, yeah. That's cool. So that that's that was kind of my start to my day. Um, so yeah, so then while I was waiting for um, Beck to get back, I just tidied the house, did the washing, put the dishes away, stuff like that. Um, Grab some brekkie and then I just shot into the office. And uh, here's a big win, something I'm super, super, super proud of. So we got a bill last month at our, at our house. 
for um, nearly three grand, twenty seven hundred dollars for a water bill. And I was going, what the hell? Like, you know, the last few months uh, or last few bills have been like, you know, 200 bucks, 400 bucks, 500 bucks, maybe like, you know, nothing crazy. And, and, you know, we're not frivolous, but, you know, we also are a family of six. So I'm not, it's not lost to me that we do use water, you know, but I was just like, yo, this is wild. So... I got um, Charlene, she's our um, admin lady, and I was like, hey, can you just go through and have a look at all my, all our bills and let me know when the last bill that wasn't estimated was? And it was when we bought the house. So it's like three years ago. I was like, that's crazy. So I spoke to ACCC and they put me on to, just because I wanted to have my ducks in a row before I went and threw my weight around with Watercorp. Um, I spoke to ACCC, they put me on to the energy and water ombudsman and they said, hey, listen, yeah, you're definitely within your rights with this. Um, like they should have checked the meter call them if you don't get the outcome you're wanting uh give us a ring back so uh i gave water corp a call and the chick on the phone was like hey this is above my pay grade i'm gonna get one of the other guys i was like yep no dramas got on the phone to him he's gone yeah man um this is very abnormal uh first time i've seen this um let me um like have a look at your account and see see what we can do and i said to him i was like okay mate like yeah just a heads up like i've done the calculations like i've you know, averaged it out over the last three years, um, our total usage and, you know, his, like, it, we, really, we've been overcharged by about $900. Um, I understand we have used the water. I'm happy to pay for that, but I'm happy to pay the appropriate rate, not the rate in the top tier. And, um, and I was like, you know, so calculating it all out, we've we've over, we've been overcharged a collective of about $900 on this. And so that's kind of what I'm anticipating. He's like, yep, sure. Let me have a look and see what I've got. I had a meeting um, about half hour later. And so the guy was kind of, oh, no, sorry. At this point, it was about 20 minutes away or 15 minutes away. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, like he should be able to like, he was like, you know, give me five. I was like, yeah, no dramas. So um, I went and picked up some coffee to take to um, this meeting. And it's getting there and it's like, it's like one minute two and I'm waiting and waiting and I'm still on hold. And I'm just like, oh, like this is a meeting that I, I absolutely cannot miss. So I had to just pull it. So I hung up the phone and I was like, I'll call him back and I'll follow up in a second. So I put my phone in airplane mode because no doubt I'm going to get phone calls from him trying to, you know, reestablish the, well, you know, let me know what's going on. And so I put my phone in airplane mode and spent about an hour and a half in this meeting. And, um, and I'll come back to that meeting in a second, actually, which was really good. And um, the, yeah, so after the meeting, I checked my phone, I took my phone out of airplane mode and I saw that like I was three missed calls. And um, the guy was like, hey, it's such and such from Watercorp. Um, you know, uh, I've sent you an email, blah, 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 blah. I was like, yeah, sweet. So I get home, check my emails. And um, and the guy says to me, he's like, oh, in the email, he's like, you know, I've had a bit of a look and I've applied the credits um, to your account and uh, your current balance is $0. And I was like, what? I was like, what? So... I jumped on our water corp account and had a look and it is zero dollars. I was going, what just happened? Like, what just happened there? Huge win, like massive win. I was like, this is wild. So I showed back and yeah, sure as eggs. Like I was like, this and so I called the guy because he, he gave me his direct line. He's like, call me if you want anything else. I was like, yeah, sure. So I called him up. I was like, brother. I was like, Firstly, thank you very, very, like, incredibly much. Thank you. Like, I was getting ready to have to go to the ombudsman and shit like that. And, and I was like, Barry, like, this is like, like, why? Like, what happened? You know? And so, originally, my argument was like, why wasn't our bill read for three years? And if it was our responsibility, how come no one told us? And if it wasn't, then why was it now read after three years of not reading? You know? And he said, oh, so he's like, well, um, you know, we're only allowed to legally project and estimate bills for 18 months. Uh, in our case, the projections and the estimations went on for like three years. And it's so like the fine print on where it says it's been an estimation is so, so minuscule. And um, and I was like, right. And because whenever the bills come in, we just we're like, you know, okay, it seems reasonable. We'll just pay it, you know. And um and he's like, yeah, I mean, he's like, you know, that's our that's our mistake. You know, we, we made that well, we made that error. So I uh, spoke to one of our other guys, and you know, being that it, it, it's our balls up, yeah, we just wiped the whole bill. And I was like, boy, I was like, man, like you've just made my day, boy. That is like 
thank you. That's so cool. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, like it's it, it, like to a personal budget, two and a half grand, 2,700 bucks, like that is meaningful. That is absolutely meaningful. So, yeah, that was, it was super cool. That was a big win. I was very, very happy with that. So, um, yeah, so jumping back into this meeting. So, there's, there's this guy that I'm starting to kind of get to know and um, and he's quickly becoming a bit of a, um, I guess, a mentor. Um, I guess in a bit of an unofficial, unofficial, kind of unofficial, you know, and... Um, yeah, it's been it's been really cool. It's been really cool. Like obviously, he's a lot further in along in business than we are, and um, got a lot of really good experience. And so it was really great to to start, um, you know, a lot of the lessons around like you know leading or like leading a group of people and organizations and and ultimately like uh, this is the like here's here's what I can work out so far. There needs to be clarity. There needs to be the right tools, and the tools might be the right system, right? Um, and there needs to be motivation, and people need to be able to like. And so, motivating people appropriately and correctly um, for whatever they want, whatever that looks like, making sure they're getting what they want, right? Or in what they need. Obviously, need first, want second. Um, providing clarity so they know exactly what needs to happen and how to do it and then providing all the resources for them to do it really 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 well and um and even talking with him like around like you know how to actually make sure your team has the full visibility around how they're doing and 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 all that has been super interesting um and so obviously around building the system that we're building this this app there's obviously there's a back end level of clarity that we want to be able to have the whole team have access to so they can see how we're how we're performing and and how we're doing so yeah so it's 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 cool it's cool um yeah i'm getting a lot of a lot of value out of speaking with him uh so yeah so uh came home had another meeting with sue who does the great game of business um implementation in in australian businesses and there was uh it, one, one thing this was this was kind of cool like this was nice for she said to us she was like you know, there's a lot of things I would have to work on with business owners that I'm not needing to do with you, you know, around, you know, knowing how our we get to our bottom line, knowing the things that need to happen that drive our profitability figures. And, you know, and this is something that really, really surprises me. I was talking to uh, our banker and I said to her, I, was, I can't remember the, the question, but the the short answer of it all was that, there are very, 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 very few business owners that actually know their figures and know their how to make their business make money. You know, how do they actually how do they actually get paid? How do they actually have this? Um, how do they get to the point of profitability? What are the drivers, the KPIs that that they get it there? And um, super super interesting. I was shocked, hey, because she was like, yeah, like you're one of the few that actually have their finger on the pulse. And I'm sure that other people who are, you know, very business savvy might say, you know, like maybe there'd be a level of offense there or, you know, how does little old Billy with a coffee shop? Um, I don't think it's exclusive to other people having finger on the pulse though. Uh, I think it's just very surprising that there's not many business owners with fingers on the pulse. So... Yeah. So anyway, uh, so that was really cool. And just realizing, man, like this, implementing these systems is going to light a firecracker under my ass. And I just need to be way more diligent with my time and attention and focus and just fucking make shit happen. Hey. And it's one of the things that I'm already really good at. I'm really good at just making shit happen. Like if I decide that's what I'm doing next, it just, I I do it. And um, so, so that's cool. Um, yeah, but I've got my work cut out for me. I've got so much shit to do away. That sounds so bad. That almost sounded spiteful. Maybe I should check myself. Anyway, so caught up with the kids then. Um, the kids had saved their money for buying their, their you know, this is like probably like five days. And they had all their money for um, their teddies. Super proud of them. So they had these lucky dips that they saved up for before. And they all saved their money and... Uh, 
and it was the cool part is you know it's it's their money they've got full ownership of this they all got like you know tilly got these like you know um glitter um glitter glue textures pens things lexi got a teddy eliza got her teddy and they did it like i mean eliza yeah obviously not like you know the girls um pretty much sold the lucky dips for her but nonetheless like you know they all got it at the same time and and they worked for it so that was really really cool um, then last thing I did was, uh, there was one of our suppliers, um, and obviously not going to name names, but wanted to cross promote with us and collaborate with us, um, collaborate by way of, I guess, co-branding on our cups. Yeah. I'm sure like every, every cause there's been a few people that approach me about this. I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, it's really great. You know, like we'll uh, we'll be able to cross promote and we'll cover the cost of your cups and these sorts of things. And that's all well and good. But I'm like now it's a shared brand. It's not just it's not propaganda. It's propaganda and. And I'm just super dubious about it. eh? Yeah. And the thing is, if I do it for one, then every man and his dog's going to do it. Like, <coughs> at least going to want to do it, you know. And they're like, oh, you know, how can... I think, I think I'd prefer to retain my brand. Yeah, or put an incredibly high premium on it. Rather than just the cost of the cups, like. Yeah. I don't know. Might put it out to a few other people I know and see what they've got to say. Um, yeah, and then just came home, bedtime routine, stuff with the kids. Yeah, that's that. 